Hi, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Cindy. I'm 40 years old and I have borderline personality disorder and I am sharing my journey of healing, growth, and finding my own self-worth and self-love. And adding to my intro, I am now going to say that here we discuss mental health, magic, and the mundane. It's actually pretty late in the day. It's like four o'clock and I just started filming. I have had a weird day. I've been feeling very introspective today. I was working on some of my therapy homework. So one of the things that my therapist had me do is to write down in my journal a question to myself. And the question is, what do I feel? What doubts and fears do I feel are holding me back in my life right now? So so I wrote that question down and then I just started to like free flow write and things came out that I wasn't even aware of. So um, it was an interesting experience. So even though I've been able to change so many of my limiting beliefs, even though I've been able to shift my mindset so much and build my self-esteem, I still have things that come up that I have to deal with. And I think that's, it's just an ongoing process. I really think healing and working on yourself is a lifelong process. So I feel like stuff will be coming up for me for quite a while. My EMDR therapy, once again, is going Going fantastically. It is so incredibly helpful to me. So another thing I wanted to talk about, because I've been talking a lot about limiting beliefs and how I've been changing those for myself, EMDR is another way to change your limiting beliefs if you have access to it. Um, so in EMDR, as we reprocess like the traumatic memories right now, we're working on childhood stuff. I have to come up with a belief that I have about myself in relation to that memory. So like, for example, the first one we did was I am not lovable. And I was able to change that belief through EMDR, but also through my own inner work into I am absolutely lovable. The thing is you can only do EMDR one hour a week. So I do lots of other things such as my positive affirmations, journaling, um, meditation to work on my limiting beliefs on my own as well and I think you can definitely do both. One more thing I wanted to address about this and then we'll be done with the mental health portion of this vlog is I saw someone on my pre on one of my previous videos mention spiritual bypassing. Um, saying positive affirmations to yourself to change your limiting beliefs is not spiritual bypassing unless you use that in a way to avoid working on your deeper issues. That's not something that I recommend and not something I am doing. I work through my deeper issues. I am working through all of my childhood traumas and all of the beliefs I have about myself due to those, all of the distress and like PTSD stuff that that causes for me. I'm working through that diligently in therapy and I'm never going to stop ever. I will never stop working on that. So that video about positive affirmations was not meant as a complete, to be a complete picture of everything I'm doing for my mental health. It was just me sharing something that has been really helpful for me. Um, recently. I'm also doing the deeper work of working on healing those old traumas. I hope I didn't come across like I think you should just tell yourself that you're awesome over and over and over again and not work on any of your deeper issues because that is not what I intended. So um, no, you should definitely continue to work on any of the issues that you have. And, and for me, it's probably going to take years before I work through all that and stuff still keeps popping up. The thing is, now I'm in a much better place to be able to deal with that stuff. And when things come up for me, I can deal with them in a much more healthy way. And I don't let it send me down a spiral of self-loathing and hatred anymore. I know that that is an incredible step forward for me. Even, let's see, on Sunday, I had a, a mo I had like some sadness that I had to deal with, some sadness that came up for me. I let myself feel it. I always let myself feel my feelings now. I never try to repress them. I always let myself feel everything I have to feel. If I need to cry, I let myself cry. If I need to scream, I let myself scream. Whatever I need to do to let just feel the emotions, experience them, let them out. But the thing is now I no longer assign any meaning to those feelings that says anything bad about me. So that is the change that I've been able to make. And it makes just dealing with everything so much easier. Instead of thinking, oh God, Cindy, you failed. You feel sad now. You might as well just, everything sucks. Just fuck it. Your life sucks. I don't think that anymore. I think, okay, I'm feeling sad. Let's think about why I'm feeling sad. Let's feel the feelings. Let's think about where they're coming from. Let's um, try to work through that and release that. So that's the way I approach it now. And then I get through it. Sometimes it might take me a couple hours to get through it. Sometimes it might take me a couple days. Sometimes it might take minutes. It just depends on like where the feelings are coming from. But I'm just able to deal with negative emotions in a much better way than I ever have been able to before. And I think that's a direct result of the inner work that I've been doing to increase my self-worth and self-esteem. 
So it definitely is possible. And another thing, it kind of like a switch was flipped for me when I realized that I could observe my feelings objectively without assigning any meaning to them, that I could observe them almost like I was somebody outside of myself. And this is another thing that I learned in therapy that you might find helpful. So if I have a limiting belief or a doubt or a fear, I will write it down and then I will write a reply to it as if I were my friend. So imagine that your best friend wrote down on paper, I feel like I'm worthless and nobody will ever love me. Then you respond to that in the way that you would respond to your best friend. You respond from a place of just the highest love and understanding. And it really helps you to work through things because it teaches you to be compassionate with yourself. Okay. <laughs> So that's my mental health rant for today. Now what we are gonna do is go make some herbal face wash. Oh, but first I want to open up my uh, new essential oils that I just got in the mail. So I am trying a new company for essential oils because in the little small town that I live in, there is nowhere locally to buy high quality essential oils. There just isn't. So I was gonna have to order them and I wanted to look for a good company that was reasonably affordable. So I am trying this company called Plant Therapy. Let me know if you've ever used any of their essential oils in the comments. And uh, I'm gonna show you what I got from them. And we are gonna try these out today. Oh, they even sent me, they sent me a little sticker that says squeeze the day. And I realized that I didn't get the email that they were delivered. It like went to spam and these were sitting in my mailbox for like two days. So I hope they're okay. Two of these oils that I got were super expensive, okay? I had to get the tiniest little bottles of them. This is a lemon balm essential oil. I had to get 2.5 milliliter bottle, okay? And of the German chamomile, I got five milliliters. So these are precious, precious oils to me and I will probably use them very sparingly. And then I got, also got a couple more oils that I needed just in general. So I got um, 10 milliliters of the lavender essential oil and 10 milliliters of rosemary. So I'm excited to try these out today and see what I think about the quality and I will let you know. So I'm gonna be making a recipe from the Herbal Body Book by Stephanie Torles, I think is how you say it. Um, I will link to this down in the description box below. It has really good recipes if you wanna make your own cosmetics and stuff. Today, we are gonna be making the Herbal Soapy Skin Wash right here. I'll put it on the screen so if you wanna pause it. Really all it is is liquid castile soap with essential oils and a little bit of either sweet almond, jojoba, or grapeseed oil. So here are all of our supplies that we're going to need to make this. Now I normally use Dr. Bronner's castile soap, but I couldn't get any, so I couldn't get any of the large bottles of it. So I'm trying this Quinn's castile soap. Hopefully it'll be just as good. It was comparably priced. And then I have, of course, my essential oils. So we are gonna be using tea tree essential oil, peppermint essential oil. And now also I always give this disclaimer when I use this peppermint essential oil. I do not recommend the brand doTERRA. I'm pretty sure they are an MLM, but somebody gave this to me, so I am going to use it. And then for the new oils I got, we'll be using the Melissa essential oil and the German chamomile. Now I also bought this soap dispenser. I bought it at Walmart for about $3 and I like it because I like to have a pump for my face wash and it's like a hard plastic. And the recipe is for 16 ounces, but this obviously is not a 16 ounce bottle, so I'm gonna make a half batch. And then I have, of course, a measuring cup and a funnel. Oh, and I almost forgot, I am using jojoba oil, but you can also use a grape seed or sweet almond. All right, hopefully y'all can see it's getting dark outside. I got all my kitchen lights on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is measure out um, eight ounces of the liquid castile soap. And I gotta open it up. So lately I've just been washing my face with just plain Castile soap. I had a little left in my other bottle. And so I've just been using that. So this is gonna be an upgrade to my face wash. So let's measure out eight ounces or one cup or 250 milliliters, if you will. And then I'm gonna use the funnel to pour this into the container, which I think is was a 10 ounce container. Yeah, that's gonna leave us plenty of room to put in all the ingredients and shake it on up. Oh, you know what? Let me turn on my little mushroom lights over here. That gave us absolutely no more light on the working area, but anyway, they're cute to look at. So I'm just gonna leave the funnel in while we put our essential oils in. So the recipe calls for five drops of tea tree essential oil. So I'm gonna do two drops. 
Since I can't do two and a half, I'd rather do too few than too many. I don't want to burn my face or something. So one, two. It also calls for five drops of peppermint essential oil. So I'm going to do two drops of peppermint. One, two. Two, okay. It calls for three drops of Melissa. So I can't do one and a half drops. So I guess I'm going to have to do two drops of the Melissa oil. This is like precious gold. Okay, two of those. <laughs> Literally, it's like $30 for this tiny little bottle, y'all. I'm not kidding you. But this will make so many batches of face wash that it will pay for itself. And then we want five drops of German chamomile. Now, you can, it also says that you can use... Sorry if you hear my dogs in there playing. It also says that you could use sandalwood instead of German chamomile. So I'm going to do two drops of German chamomile. It's blue too, by the way. If you didn't know, German chamomile essential oil is blue. So that's going to add a little color to our mixture. My dogs are going crazy. I'm sorry. And then finally, we're going to do one teaspoon of jojoba oil. And one teaspoon is five milliliters. If you're somebody who uses milliliters. Oh no, I was only supposed to do half. Oh no, I did a full teaspoon. I was only supposed to do half. Oops. <laughs> well, it's going to be very moisturizing face wash. Hopefully it doesn't make my skin too oily when I use it to wash my face. Okay, so I'm going to put the lid on and give this a good shake to distribute all the oils up. Ah, uh, the blue oil didn't really color it very much, but that's okay. And now I'm just going to squirt a little bit out so I can see how it smells. Oh my god, y'all. It smells really good. It smells primarily like the Melissa oil, which I love the smell of lemon balm, so this is fantastic. I can't wait to use this tonight when I wash my makeup off. But yeah, that's just a very simple way to make a little natural face wash. Um, since I ran out of my CeraVe, I decided I wanted to replace as many of my products as possible with homemade more natural versions and so yeah I was just using regular Castile soap but now I've got this upgraded face wash oh yeah I can sort of see like a bluish green tint to it I don't think it's really maybe it's coming through with the camera from the uh, chamomile oil and also if you do make this for yourself um, just before you use it every time make sure you give it a little shake just to make sure all the oils are uh, mixed up well. And one more little tip the book says this makes an especially invigorating body wash too. I have another recipe for body wash I want to make soon, but yeah, this would make a good one. And I know y'all want to see the dogs having their play session. Um, it's almost dinner time for them, so they're getting all excited and worked up. <laughs> oh, they're so adorable. Oh my gosh, they're getting crazy. They're getting crazy, y'all. <laughs> they finally realized I was talking about it. Okay, I know I said we were done with mental health, but there's one more thing I wanted to share. I saw this on Instagram earlier, and I thought it was so good and so applicable to like where I am in my life right now that I thought it might resonate with some of you guys too. So I'm just going to read you this little passage. It says, you are being presented with a choice, evolve or remain. If you choose to remain unchanged, you will be presented with the same challenges, the same routine, the same storms, the same situations until you learn from them, until you love yourself enough to say no more, until you choose change. If you choose to evolve, you will connect with the strength within you. You will explore what lies outside the comfort zone. You will awaken to love. You will become. You will be. You have everything you need. Choose to evolve. Choose love. And that is, from, that is by Craig Crippen from Ritual of Heart. And I just thought this was so perfect. It just resonated with me so much because I was going through this exact thing where I would just keep reliving the same scenarios over and over and over again in my relationships because I didn't love myself enough to stop. I didn't love myself enough to choose me. And, and say no more to that. But I finally have chosen myself and I have chosen to evolve and it's um, really amazing the way in which my life is changing every single day. It's really amazing. And I finally, you know, I was left with absolutely no choice because I was basically at rock bottom and I was left with, with no choice but to evolve or just give up. And I just, I could never give up on myself. So I guess I did have a little bit of self-love somewhere deep down inside because I didn't give up on myself even when I didn't believe that I deserved love or that I loved myself at all. And now I am finding so much love for myself every day, so much strength inside myself. 
and I am fixing all of the issues that caused all these problems in my life for so many years. I finally chosen to do it and I'm fucking doing it and it's awesome. <laughs> all right, so that's all I have to say on that topic. Now we've covered, we've covered mental health, we've done a little of the mundane, and now we're gonna do some magic. So it's actually the next day now and I'm getting ready to make a love charm and I'm gonna let you join me for this process. So when I harvested those spider lily flowers or spider wart flowers from the forest behind my apartment, I did intend to use those for this purpose once they had dried up and they're pretty much dry. So we're gonna cut them off the stems and use them in our self love charm. Let's do it. So y'all, it is a very dark, dreary day outside. So I'm gonna light some candles on my altar so we have some additional light. So this is just my pink candle um, that I light when I'm working here, but I'm also gonna light another candle that I brought over here just to make sure I have enough light to work by. And I'm gonna light some incense while we work. I'm gonna be using this Folk Essence Rose and Geranium incense today. And this stuff is really awesome. I will link to it down in the description box. You can get it on Amazon. And um, I was sent by a subscriber like a whole set of these Folk Essence incenses and I really like them. But I thought Rose and Geranium would be perfect for making a love charm. It's not the incense of the day, but it works well for our spell purposes here. And this stuff smells fantastic if you like the smell of rose like I do. I love rose. Roses are my favorite flowers and one of my favorite scents. Okay, so here's our working altar for today. Now I've got a few supplies here. I have a little um, linen bag that I'm gonna use to put all of our charm items in. I have some dried rose petals um, that I'm gonna use. We are gonna cut the flowers off. As you can see here, they're pretty much all <laughs> dried up here off the spider wart. And finally, I'm gonna go over here to my crystal hoard and I'm looking for a, specifically for a rose quartz and I know I have a polished one in here. Here it is. All right, so we're gonna use a polished rose quartz. And if you're wondering why I chose the supplies I did, I am gonna tell you why. So I always consult Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs when I wanna do a charm or a spell like this and look for herbs and things that I already have on hand that would lend themselves well to the type of spell we're doing. And since we're doing love today, that's why I chose rose petals. So rose's magical properties, according to the encyclopedia here, are love, psychic power, healing, love divination, luck, and protection. Roses have long been used in love mixtures, owing to the flower's association with the emotions. A chaplet of roses worn when performing love spells or a single rose in a vase on the altar are powerful love magic aids. Rose water distilled from the petals is added to love baths. Rose hips are strung and worn as love attracting beads. And it goes on and on to give like several different uses for roses and rose petals, but we're using rose's power of love to add energy to our charm. And I will link um, the Encyclopedia of Herbs and the Encyclopedia of Crystals that I'm using today down in the description box. I would highly recommend both of these if you're into spell work of any kind that come in very handy. According to the Crystal Gem and Metal Magic Encyclopedia, rose quartz is used to stimulate love and to open the heart chakra. To attract love, wear a heart-shaped rose quartz. Its magical applications include promoting peace, happiness, and fidelity in established relationships. So I'm gonna tap into the love energy of rose quartz to bring love to myself. So obviously you could do a very similar spell to this. You could do this exact charm if you were trying to attract a love from the outside. But right now I am on a journey of self-love, so this is gonna be a self-love charm. Oh, and how could I forget the spider wart, which is what gave me the idea for this charm in the first place. Um, I talked about this in a previous vlog, but just in case you didn't see that, has only one power listed in the encyclopedia and that's love. The Dakota Indians carried the spider wart to attract love. All right, let's go make our charm now. I'm so excited. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my white handled knife and I am going to remove some of these flowers. I don't wanna set myself on fire. I'm gonna remove some of these flowers from the stems. I'm gonna get as many off of here as I can. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying my best here, but there we go. I'm just cutting off the dried up flowers. Okay, I was able to get several of them off of the stems here. So now I'm gonna take these and put them inside my little linen bag. And while I do this, I will sometimes say um, words while I'm doing this, like, thank you, little flower of spider wart for lending me your powers of love or something like that. Just something that shows my gratitude for the energy that I'm gonna receive from this. Next, I'm gonna add in some dried rose petals. And 
And then I'm gonna add in my rose quartz. And if I had any, if I had some like rose essential oil, I might put a few drops in there, but I don't because it's super expensive. <laughs> so then I'm gonna pull this tight and we've got our little charm. So what I'm gonna do now is sort of like charge this with loving energy. I'm actually, actually I'm gonna tie this up to make sure nothing falls out of it. Okay, so what I, what I would do with a little charm like this is I would hold it in my hand and then I would imagine like a pink glowing light coming from my heart and traveling down my arms and into the charm itself. And I would imagine this, this light for me right now is filled with love for myself, love of the universe, love of source, God, whatever you want to call it. And I will just infuse this little charm with all those feelings of love, all that loving energy. And I will see it in my mind's eye, like glowing with this pink glow, like this pink aura of love. So I might say something like, as long as this charm is with me, may it remind me to always love myself, that I am loved, I am surrounded by love, and I freely give love to myself and others. And then I'll just do a little pass through the rose incense and now our charm is complete. So I think what I'm gonna do with this is just carry it with me. Maybe I'll even put it in my purse and I can make multiple ones of these, like keep one in my bedroom, keep one in my purse to always remind me that I am loved, that I love myself, that I'm surrounded by the love of the universe. Um, it's just a little charm to lend me that little extra boost for my self image. And it's just a fun little project to do with my uh, gathered wildflowers. All right, I'm gonna go put this in my purse and then I've got one more mundane thing to do. So first of all, my moth ring that I bought the other day that doesn't fit me, I finally got my little uh, ring sizer things in the mail. Ring snuggies, and there's a bunch of different sizes in here that you can put on your ring to like make it fit you better. So it's just like a little plastic tube. I don't even know if you can see this. Here we go, like a little plastic tube with an opening that you just like push onto the ring. Um, and let me see if I can. I don't have the greatest dexterity here, but I'm gonna try to push this on to the ring. All right, now I got it on the ring like that. And now I'm gonna try to put it on my finger. Okay, now it actually fits with the little Snuggie on. Yay, so now I can wear my, real, my new ring and not worry about it falling off somewhere. Yay! <laughs> so yeah, can recommend the ring Snuggies if you have a ring that's too big for you. So now I've got two more things I wanna do. So one thing I wanna start doing in my vlogs is to uh, answer viewer questions like I did in my previous vlog. So what I'm gonna do is just go to my comments and filter by comments that have a question in them. And I'm gonna answer questions that I received since the last time I answered questions. And as, as long as they're not hateful or rude of course so if you have any questions that you want me to answer in a vlog put them down below and hopefully I'll be able to get to those uh, in the next vlog for you okay so the first question I just got two minutes ago so um, celestial sim says I love this mug also is the black skull a candle and yes I th I'm pretty sure they're referring to which it's dusty it's a little dusty this black skull candle yes it is a candle I don't burn it I just leave it as decoration but I bought this at Walmart um, during Halloween and I just have it as a little decoration on my desk. I love it too. Oh, next question is, who wears lace-up shoes in the house all day? How is that comfy, Cindy? Don't you want to stretch your toes? <laughs> well, let me tell you something about that. I wear, I, the reason why I wear my shoes in the house all day is I actually started doing this when I started following the fly lady method of cleaning and keeping your home organized. And she recommended that you get dressed in the morning down to your shoes. And I found that doing that just makes me feel so much more productive. It makes me feel put together like I'm going to work and I can get more stuff done around my house if I do that. If I don't put shoes on, I feel like just I'm lazy and I'm just lounging around and not getting anything done. And I don't know why I've just associated this in my mind with productivity. So that's why I wear my shoes. And when I'm done with all my work for the day, then I take my shoes off. So that's the reason why. And no, I don't find it uncomfortable either. Next question is, I've got a question. I don't think I've seen you travel abroad in vlogs. If you have traveled abroad, what's your favorite place and why? I have never traveled abroad before. I've only traveled within the United States. I've never been outside of the US. My top three places I want to go are Australia, Japan, and Norway. But my favorite place to travel in the US is Florida so far. Although I really did enjoy Southern Michigan. Um, so I don't know, that might be tied with Florida now. <laughs> Since you said you were answering questions later in a video, my question is when exactly did you start doing these affirmations and how long have you felt better from doing it? Two months? Um, I started doing the affirmations, the positive affirmations about two months ago. It was like a week after um, the breakup that I started 
getting into positive affirmations but i didn't start doing the like really fucking scorched earth part of it um until about five to six weeks ago and i started to feel better immediately like immediately i felt immediate relief from it within like a day or two like i wouldn't say i'm completely perfect or done with it i'm definitely not and i'm going to talk about another limiting belief that i have that i've discovered that i have in the next vlog that i'm working on very diligently right now and it's been a tough one for me um, but yeah, I started to feel better from it, like immediately upon doing it, like immediately as I started to like internalize the new positive beliefs about myself and not believe the negative beliefs about myself anymore, I felt like I felt better immediately. And I continue to always remind myself every day of those positive uh, beliefs that I now hold about myself. Like every day I remind myself, Cindy, you are loved, you are worthy, you are valuable, you are beautiful, you are awesome, you are smart, you are deserving. Like I tell myself all those things every day and the more you do it, the better you feel and the more you believe it over time. So yeah, I think it's only going to be more helpful <laughs> as time goes on. Um, if I'm having a lot of anxiety about something and I sit down and just do affirmations, just do concentrated affirmations um, in, or meditate and do concentrated affirmations, it can relieve a lot of my anxiety pretty quickly. That's just my own personal experience, not saying that's how other people have to experience it, but that's how it's been for me. And I've just found like the more I work on it, the better I feel. Uh, next question is what are your visualizations? Well, I do visualizations based on my current affirmations. So it just depends. Like I've talked about my visualization where I visualize that I'm surrounded by the love of the universe and love of myself. So I do a lot of self-love visualiz visualizations like that. And I may do visualizations of like when I'm saying, when I'm telling myself like I'm confident, I'm beautiful, I am intelligent, I'm charismatic. That when I tell myself these positive things about myself, then I may imagine myself, like I may visualize myself just being out like with a group of friends, hanging out, you know, joking around around with people and stuff like that. Just visualize anything that comes to mind that represents to me my current my current affirmation. Okay, and that is all the questions all the way back to the last one I answered. So thank you so much for your questions. Again, if you have any more for me, leave them down in the comments and I will answer more in the next video. Okay, now time to open subscriber packages. I went to the post office and I had this huge box um, waiting for me. So we're gonna open this one first and see what's inside. I got my little handy dandy box cutter here. All right, I got it open. And wow, this is a big box for not that big of an item. But check this out. I think I know what this is. There is a note in here. It says, hi, Cindy. I hope you enjoy using this yoga mat when practicing. I've had mine for nearly 10 years and I love it. All the best from a longtime fan from Mimi in Switzerland. Oh my God, thank you so much, Mimi. This is gonna be so helpful for me in my yoga practice. Thank you so much. It says, unwrap to feel the love. Thank you. Yes, I have continued to do yoga in the mornings. I'm still not very good at it, but I'm getting there. I'm getting better. And it makes me feel so good uh, when I do it. So I'm definitely going to continue to do it. This is um, Eco Light is the name of it. Thank you so much, Mimi. Yes, I will definitely start using this tomorrow. Then I had one more package here. This is uh, from Florida. That's all I know. So let's open it up and see what's inside. We've got a little box. I'm not sure what's inside and a card. The card says, you know what you did. Thank you. Uh, and there is a lovely uh, note inside. This is from Raven from Florida. Thank you so much, Raven. What a beautiful name. Oh, I saw this charm and thought of your channel because it reminds me of the star card symbolism. I added an aquamarine charm by intuition. I think it's moss aqua. But the star card and the peace, vulnerability, healing, and wishes hope it represents just gave me life plus Cindy vibes. Oh, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. It's a little star card um tarot necklace with a little aquamarine look hopefully that is <laughs> focusing in on the necklace that is so cute thank you so much oh you can't even see the little charm on the back there we go hopefully that's focusing um that is adorable and i love it thank you so much raven i really do i'm gonna go have to go add this uh 
to my necklace collection and wear this very soon. Thank you very much. Okay guys, I guess that's gonna do it for today's vlog. I am about to go do a members only live stream and then I'm gonna edit and publish this vlog afterwards. So I've got a busy day. And I just wanna give a special thanks to my channel members. Thank you so much for all your support. I've gotten a lot of new members lately uh, since I've started doing the members only vlogs. So I'm doing one members only vlog per week. And if you want to have access to that, you can click the little button down below to become a channel member. And also I wanna say thank you to everybody who watches my vlogs. I appreciate each and every one of you so much. And uh, I will see you with a new video very soon. Bye.